having put down the rising of giants, the party of adventurers discovered that the motivating force behind their pillaging was a long forgotten evil, the Dark Elves. Determined to seek out these creatures, the doughty adventurers mounted an expedition to learn the strength of the drow and bring retribution to them. Using a map which depicts hundreds of miles of passageways, the bold expedition dwelled into this underdark labyrinth. Wending even deeper into this weird underworld, the party overcame various sundry obstacles and monsters. Still on the trail of the drow, the expedition now presses on even deeper into the underdark. Hello, and greetings, lovely person. This is RPG Mods Fan, and in this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons & Dragons module D2 Shrine of the Koatoa, which was written by the legendary Gary Gygax and published by TSR in 1978. This module was meant for player characters between the levels of 9 to 12. This module was written for AD&D 1st Edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do some work to convert it to 5th Edition rules. The D2 module is the second part of the D series modules, and is part of a larger overall campaign of adventures known as the GDQ series. The overall campaign begins with the Against the Giants series, and continues through the D series, which takes place in the Underdark. In 1981, the D1 and D2 modules were compiled together in an omnibus collection. The campaign concludes with the Q1 Queen of the Demon Web Pits module. In 1987, all of the GDQ modules were combined together into the Queen of the Spiders super module. By the way, I have already reviewed the G1, G2, G3, and D1 modules, and their videos are already posted on my YouTube channel. I would recommend watching those videos before this one, so that I can avoid repeating myself in this video. Before I can talk about the module itself, the only thing I can really say is that the D2 Shrine of the Koatoa module takes place after the events of the D1 Descent into the Depths of the Earth module. I am the evil Dungeon Master, and sorry for my Koatoa friend. He is physically unable to speak our language. So, instead, I will have my thrall, RPG Modsman, discuss the module itself, and the rest of this video will contain spoilers. You have been warned. Normally, I describe monster debuts towards the end of a review video. However, the monster that debuts in this adventure is central to its story. The monster I am referring to is the Koatoa. However, I was always perplexed as to why Gary Gygax created a new monster instead of using an existing monster, the Sahugan. At first glance, both are very similar. Both are amphibious, evil, fish-like humanoids. Gary Gygax wanted to make the Koatoa more of a Lovecraftian monster, which I will discuss a little later. But first, I should describe the Koatoa. Koatoa now live at the intersection of the sea and the Underdark. A long, long time ago, during a time of forgotten history, they were driven to the Underdark by humans and other surface dwellers. Madness and insanity are common ailments amongst the Koatoa. 
Likewise, they worship insane gods and goddesses. Koatoa spawn as fish do, and hatchlings are raised in pools until their amphibian qualities develop about one year after hatching. Koatoa society structure is as follows. Koatoan leaders tend to be cleric assassins. Cleric assassins known as eyes serve the leaders. Monks known as monitors serve to keep the other Koatoa in line. Their job is to subdue or even kill other Koatoa who madly go violent in order to keep the peace. Whips are fighter assassins and are in charge of the Koatoan society's daily operations. In 5th edition D&D, if 100 or more Koatoa fervently believe and worship an idol, that idol will manifest into a deity. Basically, if they insanely believe a god or goddess is real, it will manifest and become real. The Koatoa were modeled after the Deep Ones, a Lovecraftian monster. These monsters first appeared in 1931 in H.P. Lovecraft's horror novella, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. The narrator of the story is Robert Olmsted, who is cheaply touring New England and stops at a decrepit seaport called Innsmouth. He interacts with strange and slightly mad people and observes disturbing events. Most all of the people in the town are actually monsters called the Deep Ones. And Robert tries to flee for his life out of the town. I should admit, I thought Koatoa were the silliest monsters Gary Gygax ever created. Displayed is the drawing of it from the Fiend Folio. Just look at it. Does that look like a scary creature to you? The whole fish head on a human body always made me laugh. However, at the time, I have not heard of Lovecraft, nor have I read any of his tales. I did not realize that Mr. Gygax was trying to capture the horror of Lovecraft's monsters, the Deep Ones. The D2 module takes place in the middle section of the Underdark map. Like its predecessor, the D1 module, the D2 module is simply random encounters and three encounter areas. The random encounters are rolled once per hex traveled and depends on the size of the passage traveled, whether it be the primary passages which are the widest, or whether it be the secondary passages, which are the next widest, or whether it be the tertiary passages. The first encounter area is a huge cavern with a large 80 foot or 24 meter deep river running through it. On the far bank in the cove is a large barge operated by a huge muscular koatoa named Thupshib. Thupshib's fairy fee is one platinum piece, and he does not care who or what he transports. Thupshib's companion, a giant gar, lurks in the waters nearby. If you want to make this area more interesting, have a drow merchant caravan a drow patrol, and or Koatoa pilgrims waiting here to get across. Within the second encounter area are nine surf neblin, also known as deep gnomes. The deep gnomes here are miners. Deep gnomes make their debut to D&D &D from this module. This encounter was meant to be a friendly encounter between the Deep Gnomes and the player characters.
The third and main encounter area is the shrine of the Koatoa itself. Displayed as red numbers on the map are the initial locations and number of Koatoa within the shrine complex. This does not include the Koatoa pilgrims who are within the apartments. Within each apartment, three to six Koatoa can be found. Based on the size of the apartment, I estimated the number of Koatoa that would be in them and displayed them as purple numbers on the map. At the center of the shrine is the 20-foot or 6-meter stone idol of the Koatoan goddess Blipdulpulp. It appears to be a nude human female body with a lobster head and claws in place of the expected human head and arms. For those player characters who are crazy enough to try it, it is possible to be gated to her underwater realm on the elemental plane of water from here. Other areas of the shrine complex include the throne room and palace of the priest prince who is the ruler of the Koatoa here, a library, the breeding pool, this is where the Koatoa females lay their eggs and then the males fertilize them with their milt, the fingerling pools, the Koatoa young are raised in these pools until they are about a year old and their lungs are capable of breathing air. The Sorelio, which I find out of place. Because of the way fish spawn, I cannot imagine the Koatoa having sex drives. Did Gary Gygax have a fish fetish? Roll credits? The original D-Series modules did not have proper credits sections. So displayed are the credits found within the D1 to D2 Descent into the Earth's Omnibus module. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role-playing games, especially Dungeons & Dragons. Inclusive in my wayward love are computer role-playing games. So, in the foreseeable future, I plan on continuing to feature RPGs and CRPGs. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye.
feels like I'm drowning in 